Let her out. We're still trying to figure out what the um, values of the variables are. In this case, we're looking for uh, letter S. And one thing that we know about a circle is that there are 360 degrees in a circle. Right now, we know a central angle of 80 degrees. We know a central angle of 140 degrees. And then there's a third and a central angle of X. So all that we need to do is take 80 plus 140 and add those two together. And then we can take that value and we can subtract it from 360. And that's going to give us our value for X, which is 140. Letter G. Um, what we need to know here, or what we need to recognize, is that this segment E D goes through the center of the circle of A, which means that that is a diameter of the circle. And we have a rule that says if we have an inscribed angle with regards to the diameter, which is, in this case, this value right here. That value that I just marked is really a right angle. And once we know that, we can say that 3x equals 90. We can divide both sides by 3. When we divide both sides by 3, we get our value of x, which is 30. Letter H, looking for arc ut and we're looking for arc qpu and uh, notice that um, ts is 61 and what we have in this particular picture is that we've got a red mark here which i disorientation here a little bit trouble for me to do but a red mark here and then we've got the same red mark right there, which not only means that arc TS is 61, but it also means that arc RS is 61. Both of those, um, the central angles have the same value, and consequently their arcs have the same value as well. And once we identify that fact, then we can add 61 plus 61, and we get 122. And then we want to figure out, well, how big is, again, arc UT? So we want to find out that amount. But once again, if we can recognize that UR is a diameter, it it's a cord that goes through the center of the circle. So we know 61 is 61 is 122. In a semicircle, there's 180 degrees. We subtract 22 from that. 10 minus 2 is 8. 7 minus 2 is 5. So our arc UT is going to be 58 degrees. We also want to figure out, well, how big is QPU? So let me switch colors here. QPU. So we want to figure out this angle right there. And uh, if we look really closely here, what we just determined is that this arc is 58, which consequently means that this angle is 58. I couldn't write it in very well. But over here, um, as a vertical angle, is angle Q uh, P, Q, P, R is also 58 because it's vertical angle. And again, all of these angles so far that we are given are central angles, and the measure of a central angle has the same measure as an intercepted arc. So this is 58. And once again, it goes back to this whole idea here of diameter. This is a diameter, 
which means that this entire arc here, even though I can't color it in very well, is a semicircle. It has 180 degrees in it. So to find um, the measure of angle QPU, we're going to take 180 and subtract 58 from that, and we get 122. That's this arc. But again, the measure of a central angle is going to be the same as the measure of the intersecting arc. So this is also 122. And the last one, um, on problem number three, uh, there is a rule that says that um, that this angle is half the measure of that angle, but it's a fairly obscure rule, so I don't use that very often, but I throw that out there in case somebody watching the video goes, oh yeah, I remember that. But as I erase this, what I know is that this angle of 42 degrees right there is an inscribed angle, and the measure of the inscribed angle is half the measure of the intersected arc. 42 is smaller than that pinkish arc TV. So what we can get is we can get the fact that if we take 42 times 2, which gives us 84, that is the measure of the arc. And then angle X is a central angle, and the measure of a central angle has the same value as the measure of the intercepted arc.